Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Hope you're well. Hope you can allow yourself to be bothered to sleep. Because that's what this is all about. Currently, I think I've made a 263 recordings of these let me bore you to sleep things. So this should be 264. My chair squeaking. I feel like I'm balancing on this chair. It's really uncomfortable. It's like, oh. But. Uh, very soon I'll have my new chair arriving. And. Uh, I'm hoping. That it's, no, it's going to be a non-squeaky one. But there's no way of knowing. It's one of those, uh, I, I, I mean, I think even if I was to go into a furniture shop and sit in a chair to find one that's comfortable, the one that they send me will probably still be one that's from the warehouse. It won't be that actual chair that I have tested so it's it's kind of one of those fingers crossed situations which I never really do I can't actually cross my fingers not without using the other hand and pulling the finger over I'm sure I used to be able to do that but I can't now and this isn't just off the cuff talking I was trying to do it the other day because every now and then, now, not every now and then, every, every now and then, I like to um, try and cross different body parts over, just, <laughs> just like a little hobby of mine. And I thought, I wonder if I can move my fingers over each other, but I can't. So either, I mean... I can kind of understand my right hand being because I've damaged my right hand broken it a couple of times and damaged it many times over the years so it hasn't quite got the uh, movement that it once did like flexibility Um, it it still works trust me my right hand does definitely work um as does my left it's just it's a little bit stiff sometimes it gets stiff and well both my hands do at times which is a bit uh, more so when I wake up in the morning or in the evening whatever time I wake up and my hands are a bit stiff uh, it's the only part I was it's, yeah, it's, it's when I wake up my hands are stiff that's anyway that's what I'm saying and it takes a while I kind of move them around a little bit I don't mean around around my home I don't put them in different different parts different rooms I mean I know I put my fingers together and wiggle them and stuff like that and uh, seems to do the trick but it's uh, I think it's more in my right hand than my left but even my left hand is a little bit um, 
I don't know if it's the punch bag that I got and the thing is I've had punch bags for years since I was a kid really I had a long period when I didn't have any punch bags but uh, over the last a little punch bag I've got one now it's hanging on the wall excuse me sniff sniff and I had one in my last address that I lived in that was a big stand up punch bag I didn't bring it with me why I could have just brought it with me it was like £200 that I wasted you know that was more expensive than the punch bag I've got here because it's a big, heavy... It's one of those ones where you have a little drum at the bottom that you can fill with sand. Big plastic, but have proper thick plastic. Fill it with sand or water. And uh, I suppose water, if you're outside... If, you, if you're inside, probably better to fill it with sand. Because if it does burst... And they can break a little bit because if you give them, you give it a little bit of a pound in the hole, kind of opens up a bit sometimes, and a little bit kind of squirts out after a good pounding. And it doesn't always, but it's it's. I thought that the knob would keep it sealed, you know, but it sort of unscrews. In fact. I think one I had actually had a hole in it, like separate. It cracked or something underneath. So there was, I was trying to like fill the crack up, and there was bits squirking out, squirting out of the crack, like water squirting out of the crack. And um, not ideal for indoors, because it's apart from in the carpet, it's just it's a bit unsafe really. But outside. It's all right. So before that, and I had it in my kitchen, I had this tiny, tiny little room, but with this little kitchenette at the end of it. There was basically a sink, and there was a little, uh, like a camper stove that you could cook in, the size of a microwave, really, but a camper. It wasn't a microwave. And yeah, a cupboard for stuff. So it wasn't really. Um, it wasn't a lot of room, but that's where I had my punch bag. And also because I was on the ground floor, I was in a basement, so I didn't need to worry about causing noise. Because if it had been upstairs and it had been on the floor, it would have, I guess, vibrated. It, have, you know, the pounding would have caused a degree of vibration, and um, then the ceiling would have rattled. And you know, I didn't want, I didn't, don't want to obviously disturb neighbours and stuff. So uh, <laughs> my neighbour downstairs is probably thinking, probably listening, thinking, well, if that's the case, why are you making these recordings at four thirty in the bloody morning? If you don't want to disturb me. I'm talking very quietly though. So if anyone in this building can actually hear me. Then there's something wrong with the concrete floors. Because we have concrete floors here. These are old buildings. They're proper solid. They're not flimsy. New builds, you know, where the walls are really thin. I know it's obviously not like that with all new builds, but I lived in a new build um, back in the th- not my last place, but the one before that. Really nice place, you know. You could s- potentially, as far as rooms go, probably the best room I've ever had on one level. Not, I don't mean like on the landing, level-wise. You know, I'm saying all my other rooms were kind of curved and like on a hill or in a ditch. But it was, 
it was aesthetically pleasing, kind of. So it was quite a nice road. Not road, uh, quite a nice... Uh, well, it was quite a nice area, it was supposed to be. With a nice... The house was quite big. I had an ensuite room, like a double ensuite room at the very top of the house. And then I moved in and... Well, obviously I had to move in before I could have the house. I suppose that makes sense really, doesn't it? And... It just... Nothing worked. The toilet stopped working. The shower was leaking. The washing machine broke down. It was like everything just kind of... And then we had four, four doors up from where we were. There was a... I don't know really what the right word is for it, but... Actually, three doors up. There was a lot of commotion. There was a commotional house... So also rented rented by the same landlord. But they'd basically moved in and then moved in all their friends and didn't pay any rent and were partying and basically just having fun, I suppose. But there's a lot of... Uh, lot of um, activities occurring... So that was kind of a bit weird. And then inside the house, people were not getting on with each other. And to top that off, I was paying £125 a week for the privilege of this. And I had never, ever spent that much money per week to live anywhere before in my life. I mean, £125 a week is, you know, I, I, I got an ensuite, so I got somewhere I could go to the toilet without having to share with someone else, which is nice. It's lovely, actually. I haven't had that very often. But £125 you know it's like uh, that is uh, it's just there's too much too much so I mean right now my my flat where I live so it's a one bedroom flat kitchen bathroom you know hallway storage room kit, bedroom and living room got the whole and it's Less, I think it's eighty-four pound a week. Compare that to one hundred and twenty-five pound for a room, a shared kitchen, a bathroom, without a bath, just a shower. That didn't work very well. one of the worst things about it is I was on a date with a lady it might be in a first date or a second date I can't remember anyway she was in my room we just had a shower together so basically we were preparing for a lovely romantic um Adventure, I don't know whatever you want to call it, you know, just to two adults getting to know each other <laughs> a little bit better. And it was lovely. It was really, really nice. I haven't had a shower shower with a lady for for, for ages before that and it was really nice. It was really just nice stuff not have to wash myself, you know, it's just a little a little break, a little holiday. And no, but 
of course I'm not going to go into graphics but there wasn't really any graphics just washing but it was nice it was very romantic it was very intimate lovely really nice we get out of the shower and we get onto the bed right Again, I'm not going to go into details about what was about to happen. And there's a knock at the door. Jason? Jason? I thought, oh my God, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> What's she doing here? No, it wasn't. It was... <laughs> it was someone that lived. It was my wife. That it was someone that lived... My boyfriend, no, it was someone that lived in the flat, in, in the house with me, not with me, but he rented a room. Jason, Jason. I said, yes. In all fairness, I didn't get too many people knocking on my door. So it wasn't like it was a continuous thing. So I felt I had to kind of ask or sort of what do you want I didn't open the door because neither of us were dressed in our best uh, dinner suits and she said I said yeah what she said I need you to come down I think your 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 shower's leaking and it's going all the way through the the ceiling and it's flooding the, the room below you So, I needed to get dressed, and go downstairs, and uh, so basically I wasn't able to use my shower, so now I'm not able to use my shower, brilliant. But not being able to use my shower wasn't really the main thing on my mind at that time. It was a little bit annoying, but yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I've forgotten about it. Oh, no. I forgot, well, obviously I haven't forgotten about it because I just told you about it, but... What a strange situation. It's like really... Because if you live, I spent. So, I know I mentioned this, but I lived in little rooms for so many years, like twenty-five, thirty years, whatever. Thirty years, yeah. For you know, pretty much from the age of sixteen, and I'm now thirty. What forty? Thirty. I'm now thirty-nine. Forty-nine. Oh dear. But I have been here for four years, so. But, 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 the thing I used to dream about, not like asleep, but wish for, for myself, was to be able to be in a place with my own bathroom where I could have a shower with my girlfriend. Not like every day. I mean, you know, depends what time she has to get out for work. But I just, I just be, just to have that privacy. I know technically you could say, well, it's not really private for her if you keep jumping in the shower every time she wants to wash herself. No, I don't mean it like that. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not that demanding. Funny enough. You know, I do give people their space. It's, uh, but, it's, you know, it was just like, oh, I've been looking forward to this for so long. I didn't, you know, I wasn't kind of planning it. It just happened, you know, organically. We had a, a shower. 
nice little shower together. It was lovely. And I think she said, I think, yeah, we went in there and said, do you finish the shower? We'll take both of us at the same time. And I said, yeah, of course. What's the worst that can happen? I've had showers before. I remember once uh, this, uh, I was about to leave um, the property of someone, you know, the, a lady that I was seeing, and. I probably shouldn't but anyway I had a shower with I was having a shower with her and I (laughs) I thought I'd be gentlemanly and um, be kind to her in a shower and as I was looking up at her All I had was the water spraying right in my eyes. You know, from the shower, I mean. And my eyes were red for about a week. I just, it was honestly, I've never, it's... Because when you're in a shower, you close your eyes, isn't it? Might not all the time, but when you're washing your face and stuff, or you've got the water on your face, or if you're washing your hair... Um, I don't necessarily, I don't have a shower now, I have a bath because my shower, I've got a shower but it's not a shower, you know, it's like a shower extension that's, you can't correct the temperature, it's not that kind of like electric shower, it's not a power shower which is what I'd want something where you can decide the temperature and it stays at that particular temperature. So, um, yeah, I haven't got one, but there is a shower thing there. But the reason I don't really have a shower, although I have when I first moved in, but it was a bit... It's just because I actually was standing up in the bath and I slipped out and I broke my wrist. I slipped out of the bath onto the the floor of the bathroom. Luckily, I didn't hit my head, which is really lucky. Um, but I did hurt my hip and my shoulder, but it was my wrist that got broke. My I don't even know which wrist it was. I think it was my left wrist. That was broken, and that was that was really soon after moving in because I tell you how soon it was. It was before I had the carpet laid down, and before I'd even started painting the walls. So I basically I'd moved in, and it must have been within a week or the first week or so, possibly the second week. But it was really, you know, quite soon after moving in. And I sort of, I said, I broke my wrist. And I was, had it in a cast uh, for about six weeks. And it's weird because it was April. And it was quite a nice weather. And that year, when I went to see the specialist... So first of all, they went. So I went to the hospital, and they said, um, "We're just going to put it into a sling for now, because it was late at night." And this, well, not late at night, but it was actually it happened early evening, probably about five. And I didn't do anything. I mean, I just decided, ah, and I'll just wear off, but. I've had a few breaks over the years and I know that the difference between a break and a, a, a sprain or a bruise is 
the initial pain of a break, it just stays. You know, it doesn't, normal pain just subsides if you bruise yourself, the pain does subside. But with an actual uh, a brain, a broken bone, it's it's almost like it stays probably not quite as bad as it is when it's first done but the initial you know it doesn't really subside so eventually I decided I needed to go to the hospital and I went there about 8 in the evening I think I got a taxi there or I might have got the bus I don't remember definitely didn't walk probably got a taxi and they gave me an x-ray and the lady that did the x-ray said I'm not really sure <laughs> she sort of didn't know not that she didn't know what she was doing but she she said she she needed to give it to the specialist but she put it in a, a brace you know and sort of tie it you know attached it to my chest not like not with stitches or glue but you know, just so she said, elevate it. So I did, I said, I said, just kept saying, you're a lovely wrist, you're wonderful, you're juicy, you're ever so, you've got a great personality, you're ever so good looking. And I was trying to elevate it. And uh, the, um, I got a letter, I think, two days later, telling me I needed to come and see the specialist because it was broken. Like, I knew it was broken. But the, the doc, I don't know if it was a doctor or a nurse, I don't know, but and basically just gave me painkillers and told me to to go away. <laughs> we're not sure. Plus they were busy with other people, so... And I wasn't an emergency. It was... But... There's absolutely no reason to go to the doctors with a broken bone. It's straight to the hospital. I don't mean don't go to a doctor, but go directly to the hospital. Because a doctor's not, well, in this country, generally, as far as I know, they don't have x-ray machines to x-ray the bone, the part of the body, to see breakages. They don't have the facilities to, you know do plaster casts and stuff like that so I would never go to the doctors or wait for an appointment for a broken bone and I said I've had enough broken bones not huge amounts but I broke my hand twice my right hand broke my wrist once my left wrist I broke my rib and I broke my foot. So other than that, that's the sort of had luckily, but there's still enough to kind of be aware of. I mean, I might have had other things when I was a kid, but it's hard to know really. It's too long ago. And I've damaged my hands really badly over the years where I haven't looked and got any help and they've been sore for, you know, a month or two, and then eventually they kind of heal. So I'm guessing I probably have had other broken bones, but like little bones probably, that didn't stop me doing what I was doing. But I have had situations where I couldn't bend my hand for weeks. It wasn't so bad on the left hand, but because I'm right-handed, that's what, that's what I mean, because I'm right-handed. I write with my right hand. Although saying that, there are it's only a couple of things I really use my right hand predominantly for. And other things I use my left hand or I use both. And one of the things I use my hand right hand for is writing. I've never I have tried to write with my left hand and it's yes it doesn't work and uh, 
but it just reminds me. Um, when I was a kid at school, the we was in I think it was junior school, so it was about nine or ten, and we used to have handwriting lessons, and I used to quite like it because my handwriting was quite good. Well, I at least I really put effort into it, and I remember the teacher was with the kid next to me saying sort of moaning at this kid saying your handwriting is not very good and the kid next to me was left handed yeah and the teacher said have you tried writing with your right hand <laughs> it's like what like uh, I'm right but I'm left handed sir yeah but if you try with your right hand it might be better couldn't be any worse very rude isn't it so I um, when I go shopping I often use my left hand to carry stuff you know like heavy things So I'm not quite sure why. So I just... I, yeah. I like my left hand being used. I like using it to carry, carry things. Uh, I can use my left hand to open doors. I don't like predominantly use my right hand. And what other things? I use my right hand. Or do I? I think I use my right hand for brushing my teeth. But I'm not always used. I might also use my left hand. Or take turns. I'm not sure. As for tying laces. Uh, you know, shoelaces. I haven't tied any shoelaces. Since for years and years and years apart from the trainers I've got and they're just tied and I just slip them on when I do use them which is not very often only really when it's snowing but that's a bit weird because they're white trainers and I start thinking oh no my feet have disappeared <laughs> but they haven't which is good What other things I use my left hand for? I can use my left hand for drinking. So that doesn't, I'm not really right handed or left handed when it comes to drinking. It's the same. I can drink out of my left hand. I could not drink out of my left hand. It doesn't contain water or liquid. It's like some magical uh, hand well. But I also use my right hand. I think as I as I discuss this important topic, I do get a sense I'm probably yeah more au fait, more excited about right handed drinking, possibly. What other things? I use both hands for typing. Now I didn't used to, but now I can. Which is weird because I, I don't think about it anymore. I can pretty much. Uh, I use both hands. So when I'm on the on a keyboard on a laptop, I use both hands to. To type stuff. I don't do like one finger, right hand like I used to. But that's more to do with just, I mean, I did used to work in a call centre typing all day long for years and years and years. I suppose I should be able to type 
um, not necessarily a quick typer, but you know, it's so I'm not I'm not a typer, as in if you stick me on a typewriter. I'm, well, I don't know if typewriters even exist anymore, but you know, if if I was going to be um, a, a secretary or a PA um, taking down short hand, I wouldn't know how to do that. I don't know shorthand. I just got normal, <laughs> normal size hands. <laughs> While the things on my left hand. Now, I find that I use my left hand um, when I'm on the phone. Don't listen with my right ear, I listen with my left ear. And as far as I'm aware, I always have done. Apart from you know, going back to being in a call centre when I'd have the I had the headset on so I could hear both ears and also now with headphones with the wire, you know, the Bluetooth, I can have headphones in so I can listen to both by both ears. But if I was going to just use the phone as it is Um, you know, to make a phone call, I would put it to my left ear because my left ear is my best ear. I can hear much better out of that than I can with my right. And so I, I figure that that must, my right ear must have been the one that I was, that I went um, partially deaf in when I was a kid. Or so I say when I might have been born partly deaf. I, don't, I really don't know. But the uh, anyway, I had an operation at seven or eight to fix that problem. But I find myself asking or needing to ask people to repeat what they've said to me. And. I kind of there's two things I don't like about it first of all I don't like I don't like having to ask people to repeat themselves and I don't like the fact that when they do repeat themselves it generally wasn't worth repeating <laughs> I wouldn't have missed anything sometimes I do talk to people and they say something and I don't hear them but I don't tell them. That's probably about 50, 60% of the time when I don't hear people, I don't hear what they've just said. And if they're laughing, I just like give a little laugh. Very, very pretend, isn't it? But I just don't want to keep saying, oh, can you, can you repeat yourself? Can you, because it's got to be annoying to people. And, Yeah, so I think I might might get my ears tested, but I, I reckon that's partly why I'm uh, so auditory dreary sensitive, so I can. I don't know. I've I've tried to figure this out over the years where I'm softly spoken generally not always but you know generally a quite a quiet spoken person and fairly slow but I think partly because I want other people to understand what I'm saying so that they don't have to ask me to repeat myself So perhaps 
uh, other people speak a bit too quickly for me at times. So it might not be my ears, I might just have a really slow brain. My ears might not be, they might just be really picking up the sounds a bit too slowly. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. If it's true. And it's only funny if it's about me, so it's fine. I'm only, I'm only, I can make fun of my own, uh, my own inadequacies or disabilities. I wouldn't do it about anyone else, but I can make fun of myself. So that's fine. So yeah, I might get my ears tested, but... I've noticed I've had the telly... I've needed to have the telly louder. But what I've got now, which is brilliant... You know what? I'm not always great with technology as far as... Um, it's a, I find some of it a little bit complicated at times um, but so much of it is really good there's some things I really I've got these headphones that are they're um, bluetooth so they're they're connected they're apple ones and they're connected to the television or to the uh, to the phone, to whatever I want to connect it to, basically, and I can watch television in the middle of the night on full, you know, full full uh, volume with the head the headphones in, and it's really good because not really into loud things generally apart from when I am but the if you I don't know if you're watching a movie it's nice to have the sounds I find quite nice, I don't mean just all of the sounds but just generally it's nice to have the because you know, people that make movies you know, there's, there's whole specialists that are working on the sound of the movie, not just the music background but all the the various different sounds they're experts in that and they're that's what they devote their life to doing so they put a lot of effort thousands of hours of effort into just the sound quality so without that it's sort of watching a movie where I'm kind of struggling to hear it I'm not getting the benefit for myself, but I'm not getting a benefit that was made for me and people, that, you know, the audience. So that person that spent all those hours and a team of people making the sound perfect and crisp and, you know, uh, working their magic... Is is lost if I don't actually listen to it. Plus, I like to listen to dialogue because I'm quite a a dialogue kind of it's a monologue, really, I suppose. But I like I like films with interesting dialogue, especially like funny, really funny stuff. But you know, that's what I like. And. It's like having a television, watching it, watching a movie and it being, you remember the old, we might not remember, but years ago you could get um, videotape, or videotape pirates of films and I watched Return of the Jedi on a pirate video back in 1980 what was it 84 
A3, I don't know, something like that. And it was a great movie, but it was awful. Because the, the picture was just absolutely terrible. It was almost like the return on a Jedi. And why have they started filming it while it's snowing? It's not snowing. Yes, it is clearly, look. No, it's just a really crappy version. Well, why are you doing it then? So, yeah, it's... I'm not such a visual person. I'm visual when it comes to some situations. I mean, we're all visual, we're all auditory, we're all kinesthetic, we all fit, you know, we all f have feelings, and we? we all, we can all be affected by what we see and what we hear and what we touch. We're all gen, well, I say we all general, we've all got those those uh, things I know some people haven't but um, I'm just generalising as a kind of generalisation-y situation but we uh, from my understanding is we have our preferred modalities and someone that perhaps creates art painting sculptures things like that would be perhaps or would perhaps class themselves as being very visual someone an architect visualises a building I mean wow you know to visualise something that's not even there. I know you could say, well, that's an artist does that, and then they create it. They might know what they, they might see what's, I don't know, because I'm not an artist, but um, I'm an artist, but not that kind of artist. I'm a, an artist of boredom, a, bo <laughs> a, a boredom artist. Yeah. And the I don't know see when a, when a when an artist or someone as far as I'm concerned an artist is anybody that creates art I'm not talking about someone that gets paid for it or anyway I think I've proven that getting paid for something you could do something about getting paid and still be fairly well, I don't get paid for this and I definitely am bo boring, so no one can deny that. So I think I, I definitely, uh, I fulfil my potential when it comes to the boredomness of uh, boredom possibilities. Yeah. And. Does someone who's about to paint a picture on a canvas, for example, do they know, can they see the picture and they kind of almost copy it? You know, sort of the pictures in their mind projected onto the canvas and they just copy the picture and fill in the bits. Like almost tracing, but tracing, not tracy, tracing but tracing something that's not there but it's in their mind or I don't know or what I don't really I tried to do some painting back in 2003 Yep, I did. I had a, I had a weasel, not a weasel, an easel, an easel board. With um, someone said to me the other day, I saw Andre. Is that a weasel? I 
I said, is, is that a crocodile? She had a dog with her. She said, no, it's not a crocodile, it's a dog. I said, well, this isn't a weasel. He's a ferret. Well, actually, he's a polecat. Ferret, you know, mixed kind of hybrid. Highly bred. So he's not really like a ferret. He is a ferret, but he's... He's more wild than a ferret and but he's not I don't know he's he's just he's just Andre he's I don't I can't imagine any other ferret is like him it's just possibly because I've spoiled him so you know just let him do absolutely anything he wants but the one thing he doesn't do he doesn't bite he bites me when we play He'll always try and bite my feet, and my toes, but not hard. Just he loves, he's got a foot fetish for some reason. But he's never, since he was a baby, he's never bitten me hard. Not really. Snapped at me a couple of times when I've told him off. Or I've, um, I think once when I put him in the bath, another time when... Oh, do you have a, he does bite when he gets caught. And it's, he can't help it, it's just he gets into that mode where, and it's still even then, it's not hard. He gets, sometimes he gets his nails caught in stuff, or he'll get his tail caught, which he did in the door a couple of weeks ago, but I've sorted that out so it won't happen again. Cut his tail off. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I put some lock things so the doors stay open now. So there's no way he can get his cattle caught in the door. Um, but sometimes he gets nail stuck. So I pick him up and try and get it out. It gets caught in his bag sometimes as well. Not his bag. Not his, you know, down there. I'm talking about his bag that he, he sleeps in and sometimes and I take him out in. So I'm trying to get the fabric or whatever it is out of his nail to get him out. And he's making lots of fuss. And he's biting me. I'm trying to help him, but he's biting me. It's almost like he's blaming me for it. I'm like, Andre, stop it. And... But I know how to do it, basically. I know now... As long as I, yeah, I know how to, well, obviously, he's, he, I've always got him out of whatever scrape he gets into, eventually. I used to say he did, this is in the summer, my neighbour got a, what was it, a filing cabinet. You know one of those ones with the trays in, you can pull out and you can lock them. Well, it opened up the, the top one, yeah? And put Andre in. Andre was loving it, you know, just... And then Andre, what did Andre do? He jumped in. Right, right down. So he was in the bottom tray. However... There was no key to open the other trays. And all I could hear was him going. <laughs> so we literally had to. I was prepared. I, I'd have just ripped the. I'd have ripped the thing apart with my bare hands if I had to. I was. There was nothing. I was. He would have got out of there. I would have got him out. But I think we ended up having to turn it upside down. And then he come out, it's like, I thought he was going to be there forever. Like, there you go, Andre, enjoy your new home. It's just, it, get, it gets into the tiniest little spaces and then moans when he can't get out. Mind you, at least he's not an elephant. I'm not 
not quite sure what the point of that statement was. At least he's not an elephant. That's a bit of a weird... A weird thing to say, isn't it? At least he's not an elephant. Maybe he is. Maybe he's a baby elephant, a really tiny elephant. Yeah. It's got a bit too surreal even for me. So, I'm going to try and get back to making a few more recordings this week. Because I'm, I'm behind on my deep sleep recordings, deep sleep whisper hypnosis, the sleep hypnosis weekly, the uh, relaxation, anxiety, blah, 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 one. So, there's a lot to do. There's a lot, lot to do. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yeah, there really is. Lots to do. So, what is it today? It's Monday, no, it's Sunday, the 1st of December, 2019. So, it's the first day of the Advent, leading up to Christmas. I don't have an Advent calendar because I haven't had one of those since I was young, very, very young. I should have got one, really, shouldn't I? Just for nostalgic reasons. It's not too late, I could still buy one. I could get one Monday, but I'm one of these people, I'm very much one of these people. Now, I like to do things from the beginning and, you know, do it all the way through to the end. You know, start on the 1st of December, not on the 3rd. The 3rd's not the same. It's just not the same. The 1st, you know? Not the 3rd. Not the 2nd. Not the ninth, but the 1st. It just seems like the right thing to do. To me. I don't know, just... Although I have a memory of having a advent calendar with alcohol, with like chocolates with alcohol in them, like liqueurs. But... I wouldn't have had that when I was a young, when I was a child, I don't think. So I must have had that when I was in my twenties. But I don't recollect when. I wonder when it was. Must have been some time. I don't suppose it really matters. Don't have to remember everything. Hmm. Hmm. The heat's coming on now. That's good. 
started to be proper wintery. Like temperature wise, I mean. Which is all right. It's, it's like, you know, it's December. It's supposed to be cold, you know. It's not supposed to be warm. So it's uh, like last night or earlier this morning or early yesterday morning, whichever it was. It was very frosty outside, very, very white, very crisp, very fresh. Which is quite nice. I mean, one of the benefits of going to work in the morning in the winter is no matter how tired you are when you get up, the, the you know, the fresh air really invigorates. It invigorates. <sighs> so I'm going to go. I'm, I really am. So thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I shall speak to you again another time. And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy, 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 happy. Bye for now. Bye bye. Lots of love. Bye 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 bye.